so now guys let's understand so now we have talked enough about probability conditional probability now let's get introduced to this concept called probability distribution which is uh, frankly something that kind of just follows naturally from what we have learned right now so before moving on to other questions john asked let's try and understand some basic concept which is fine we know what is the outcome of an experiment is as we have talked about in case of a coin flipping experiment the outcome sir could be head or tail right Now each value has a specific probability assigned to it so this probability is may or may not be equal to each other for example in case of uh bias coin cost right in which case as i said the coin is it's it's more likely to come up with heads rather than tails so in that case the probability of head might not be equal to probability of tails right uh so then in those kind of cases uh, there's always a statistical function that describes these values within a given range right so yeah this is all confusing so now let's try and build some in easy intuition with an example right so before we kind of get to the concept of uh, what is that we are trying to do let's first understand the concept of random variable so what is a random variable random variable is a value so what is a variable first right a variable is a value which can basically change over the course of an experiment right for example temperature right uh when there is a probability associated with the value that can be taken by the variable it can be called a random variable for example number of uh, number shown on the face of a die where it is rolled right so the concept is very simple what is random variable is that you are basically this particular thing that you are trying to measure in an experiment now it could be number of times heads came up number of times uh probably say if you roll a die what is the number that comes up it could be anything it could be you are trying to look for um, defective bulbs in see so you are you are looking at lot of bulbs that come into your factory and you are basically checking if the bulb is defective or not right so it could be anything and there's a probability associated with that particular event right uh, so that those are the events which are called basically those are the things that are called random variable this is basically there's an experiment that you are doing continuously and that experiment kind of gives you an outcome now that outcome has a probability associated with it now if you do this outcome multiple times if you do this experiment multiple times you would basically end up with this random variable that you're trying to measure and the value of it would basically change every time right because there's a probability associated with it so if it's a if it's a die rolling kind of an exam experiment you would roll the die multiple times right and you would every time you would basically see different numbers come up right so you could basically have your random variable as number of times or probably random variable is if is this event 3 happens or not right if event 3 as an event number 3 shows up on the die or not so that is your event a so now you are basically trying to measure that is now your random variable and you would basically have a probability associated with it so discrete variable is a variable whose value is obtained by counting for example number of students present number of red marbles in a jar number of heads so discrete variables as you are probably familiar with discrete uh, uh i don't know if you are probably familiar or not but discrete is basically those kind of variables which can be counted right so number of students in present number counted and probably they basically will hop, happen in the number that you will come across would basically be in discrete possible options right so there could be five possible options in which it could be happening so number of students present now that thing is a discrete variable because it cannot take up any random value right it can take up only values like 1 2 3 4 5 6 right so integer values same for number of red marbles in a jar that value cannot take up any random value like a 1.23 right it cannot take up that kind of a number number of red marbles in a jar could also be 1 2 3 4 and so on right so it has discrete values that it can take up number of heads when flipping a uh, three coins right so number of heads could basically be uh 3 or 2 or 1 right if you are flipping three coins so those are the only values 3 to 1 and 0 right so there could be only four possible options that could be there right so these are basically your uh discrete variables because they come in fixed discrete values right fixed possible they cannot take up any value your number of heads when flipping three coins cannot be a number like 1.23 right it cannot be that's the exact contrast to continuous variable a continuous variable on the other hand is something that can take up any value right height of students in class the height of any student can be 1.23 to 1.2345 1.2345 6 anything right 
same for weight of students in class right it could be 83.2 kgs 83.3 kgs 2345 83.2345 kgs it could be anything right time it takes to get to school right distance of tra travel between classes so all of these measures are basically something that can take up any particular value right there's there's nothing which says that height should only be one fit six fit it could be if for example you are in a school where people don't measure height in centimeters but measure in feet and that to round it off right so people are how it could be one fit two fit three fit four fit five fit or six fit now if that is the way your height is measured then it's a discrete variable right because it can only take up those specific numbers right one two three four five six but if that is not the case and you're measuring directly uh, as a as a direct um you know you're directly measuring the height in centimeters or in inches then your height could be 1.23 or whatever one two five feet 43 inches and whatever right it would be any 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 goddamn number on this world right so that's a thing with continuous variable that's exactly an opposite to discrete variable where the variable kind of takes discrete possible values so now variable is basically this thing that we are trying to note this variable that we are trying to note for example uh what is the color of a building the color of a building can be only two possible three possible there could be red green blue you know there will be five possible colors now that is something that is a discrete variable right a continuous variable uh, would be something like what we have talked about numbers which are like height weights uh, distances time speed all of these are continuous variables right so what is a simple probability distribution so let's now try and plot a simple probability distribution so let s be the random variable representing the sum of two fair six sided dice rows right so now what we are doing is this is this particular random variable we are concerned about what is this random variable it's basically the sum of two dice when they are rolled together so there are two dice in each of them it could be any number between one to six that comes up same in the other dice and what we are measuring our random variable is the sum of the numbers on the two dice on the two dice the if the numbers if that's what your random variable is that is a discrete variable right first let's understand that because there are only 11 possible options that could be there right so there are s can basically take out 12 11 possible values now the question that is being asked is can we figure out the probability for each of the values of s right so for random variables so s is the random variable right because this is the outcome that we are trying to measure this is possible 11 possible outcomes right it could be two to any number between 2 to 12 right and now what we are being asked is can we guess the probabilities can we estimate the probabilities of each of these values right for what is probability of so let's try and write that down so s basically is any number between 2 3 12 and what we are being asked is what is probability s equals to 2 similarly what is probability s equals to 3 right so what are the different probabilities for s so that basically constitute if we can figure that out that would basically be the probability distribution of s so there are six possibilities in the first row we can get any number from 1 to 6 6 in the sex so total number of combinations is 6 into 6 36 right so there are 36 possible combinations that we can have so six in first throw and six in second throw right so six into six there are 36 possible combinations that we have and out of those 36 possible combination the 11 values are basically distributed in some way right so in those 36 possible combination each combination would basically give you a sum right so if it could be one comma one and then you would basically have two it could be one comma two and two comma one right so both of them would basically sum up to three right so that's a combination so there are one this is the probability of it being two is basically one out of 36 right that could be one only one possible which one and one now it could be three is basically two out of 36 ways right so similarly there would be a probability distribution for each of them right so this whole thing is basically the probability distribution of s where for every value of s we basically get the corresponding probabilities of it so this is 1 by 36 this is 2 by 36 and we know there are 11 such values now again probability of s equals to 12 now how can it be 12 it could be only be 12 with both the throws are 6 and 6 
that could be only one possible case right so 1 by 36 similarly probability of s equals to 11 now how could that be possible that could be possible in two ways right it's 5 comma 6 or it's 6 comma 5 right so 6 comma 5 or 5 comma 6 so there are 2 by 36 right so that's the that's the, this is basically the entirely the probability distribution of s so okay now we see obviously the two dice five there's a white die and there's a red die so there are six possible outcomes and these are the 36 possible options right so out of these 36 possible options we as we saw that uh, probability of s equals to 2 is 1 by 36 probability of s equals to 3 is 2 by 36 s equals to 4 is 3 by 36 4 by 36 5 by 36 6 by 36 and again it goes decreasing right so that's a that's and you can see why it's the reason right we have already cleared this so for example if s equals to 4 4 can be done in two ways right in three ways it could be 2 comma 2 it could be 3 comma 1 it could be 1 comma 3 so now we plot all of this in a graph and this is the probability distribution of s right so there's an s the probability of 2 is 1 by 36 then 3 is 2 by 36 then 4 is 3 by 36 4 by 36 5 by 36 and this is 6 by 36 so the highest probability is for probability s equals to 7 which you can be very easily guess from this slide right because for 7 there are the maximum possible options you could have it by 1 6 6 1 that could be 2 5 5 2 there could be 3 4 4 3 so there are 6 possible ways to get to 7 and that's why 6 has the highest probability so if you roll 2 die what this basically means is if you roll 2 die and you are trying to measure the outcome basically the outcome is your sum of the two numbers that show up there's the highest probability is that it would basically come out to be 7 right because 7 has this the maximum ways you can get to uh, there are the maximum combinations possible to get to 7 right there are much lesser numbers as compared to say 2 2 can only be done in only one way if the both the numbers are 1 right so it's very tough to get a 2 on the roll of 2 die uh, versus getting a 7 getting a 7 should be really easy right that's got almost 6 by 36 probability so that's a probability distribution of this particular function now what is the concept of probability distribution? So probability distribution you have already understood it's with the random variable and the different probabilities that are associated with it. So probability function for a discrete random variable is a probability mass function and similarly if a random variable takes a continuous value it is called a probability density function right. So probability function for a discrete variable is called probability mass function for a continuous variable it's called a probability density function that's about it. So can we guess what we plotted in the previous slide? So what we plotted in the previous slide was our dis probability distribution for our random variable s. Now random variable s was a discrete variable right. It could only take up those few values between 2 to 12. Nothing. It could not take up any value like 2.37, 2.38 right. No. It could only take up 2, 3, 4, 5 to 12. So because it's a discrete variable the probability function that we have there right. So this is a probability function right. Again this is a probability function. So you can see it's almost like a bell curve, right? <clears throat> this is a bell curve. You are familiar with the bell curve, right? So this is like a bell. If you plot it, it's, it's like a bell. Only thing is this is a discrete function, right? So this is a probability. This is a discrete variable. So this is a probability density function, right? So it cannot actually be a, if it had been a continuous function, if it, sorry, it has been a continuous variable, it would have been called a probability density function. This is a probability mass function. So now what we have is basically a binomial distribution. So now we are going to talk about this particular distribution called binomial distribution, which is already something that you have already seen. So the distribution, binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution. That is to say, binomial distribution only applies for variables which are discretely distributed, right? If it's a continuous variable, you cannot have binomial distribution, right? So now let us derive a binomial distribution using a simple experiment and then we will proceed to the mathematical formula. Consider kids playing pit full of red and blue colored balls. Now we will consider that on an average 25% of the balls in the pit are red. Now if I pick up, so 25% of the balls are red and 75% of the balls are blue, right? Now if I pick up 5 balls randomly from the pit, what is the probability that 2 of them are red in color, right? Now one possible outcome for a random pick could be red, red, blue, 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 right? 
and let us calculate the probability for this particular outcome which is probability of red is 1 by 4 and probability of B which is blue is 3 by 4 right there is there are 75% of the balls are blue so probability of RRBB is 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 because the first two balls are red and then B probability of B is 3 by 4 right so 1 by 4 square and 3 by 4 cube and whatever that comes out now this is one such probability because we have been asked what is the probability that out of five balls that I pick up, two of them are red in color. Now the two can be the first red, the first two balls could be red itself or it could be any two balls, right? It does not be consequential also. It could be the first ball and the third ball right red. It could be the last two balls are red. It could be first and fourth ball are red. All we need to consider is all possibilities where there are two red balls involved, right? So now there are nine other possibilities of each of them. And we can calculate the probability of each of them with the probability of all of them would basically come out to be the same thing, which is 0 0.02026, right? So now we know that there are 10 different possibilities of favorable outcome of our experiment. We can thus calculate the probability of getting two red balls in a random pick of five balls by simply adding up these probabilities, which is basically 10 into 0 0.026. So probability out of five balls if i pick up five balls the probability that two of them would be red is 10 into 0 0.026 right because each of those events are mutually exclusive again so if we observe that carefully we can calculate above probability by simply calculating 0 0.0 by number of arrangements possible that is a combination uh, calculation given by 5c2 now this is something that i'm not very sure if you already know about this particular notation that is being shown here so So as you have already seen that what is, so what we are talking about is two red balls, right? Out of five. So now how can those two red balls be organ? You can basically, so there are five possible places. Now out of this, there should be two red balls. Now that can happen in five C two ways, right? So what does five C two basically mean is basically uh, five factorial by 5 minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial which is 5 factorial by 3 factorial into 2 factorial 5 factorial is 120 6 and this is 2 so this is 10 so this is basically the exact thing that you see so the way we calculated right so there was rr bb triple b right and there were such nine other possible combinations so there were 10 possible combinations so how do you calculate that so that is very calculated very simply using this formula called 5 c2 which is 5 factorial by 5 minus 2 factorial into 2 factorial and you would come out to the same number right so by the way n factorial if you are not familiar is n n factorial if you are not familiar is basically n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 dot 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 till all the way till 1 right so 5 factorial is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so which is 20 20 into 3 20 and 60 60 into 2 120 right so 5 factorial comes up to be 120 and that's exactly what we have here 3 factorial is 6 and 2 factorial is 2 so if you do 5 c2 you would basically come out with 10 right so this is a formula for basically calculating how many possible combinations are right obviously one way is every you basically mentally calculate what are the different possible combinations you write them down right for example r b r b b right and then you do all of this and you can basically write all of these combinations down and the other option is instead of doing that you can basically use this formula right so if there are two red balls out of five there are five c2 ways of selecting that and as we have already seen that so now from above observations so there are you can write that probability mass function for a binomial distributions is ncr so ncr is basically the number of combinations that are possible right so 10 was the number into p to the power r into q to the power n minus r right so p in our case was 1 by 4 and q was 3 by 4 right 25 percent probability and 75 percent probability so 1 by 4 to the power 10 sorry
Yeah, so now from that you can basically easily conclude that the probability mass function for binomial distribution is NCR into P to the power R and Q to the power N minus R, right? So what is P? P is the probability of success, right? So success, what is success? Success is probability that any given item in the group is of the desired type. In our case, we basically said that P is the probability that it would be a blue ball. Right, so it, the probability of it being a blue ball is one fourth, right? Because there are seven, only twenty five percent of the balls are blue, right? So one fourth into five. R is basically number of items in the group. So there are five items, so one fourth to the power five, and Q is three fourth, right? So three fourth to the power five, right? Yeah. So as of now, you have so this formula basically tells you how many times uh, if you have basically what are the possible combinations of two red balls, right? given there are five balls so there are two red and three blue balls so what is it what are the possible number of combinations you can basically check out using this so now to get what is the probability distribution of our random variable now remember what our random variable was our random variable is number of red balls right so number of red balls let us write it down so s so s is our random variable S being number of blue balls if I take five balls right so now S could basically be 0 1 2 3 4 5 right so understand this this is a discrete variable right because it can take only this six possible options right 0 1 2 3 4 5 now, for example, given S equals to 2, right, that's what we were concerned about right now. So, S equals to 2, what is the probability of S equals to 2? We saw that it was 10 into 0 0.026. So, how did we get that 10 number? It was basically 5C2. And how did we get this number? So, if you remember, this was basically half, sorry, 1 fourth to the power 2 and 3 fourths to the power 3 right so what is, why 1 fourth because we were concerned about blue balls and blue ball what is the probability of selecting a blue ball at random is 25 percent so we needed two blue balls so 1 fourth to the power 2 and we needed three sorry 1 fourth red balls were two sorry my bad we needed two red balls and red balls were the probability of selecting a red ball was basically sorry this is also red my bad probably number of red balls if I take five balls right so that is a discrete variable and this we saw what for s equals to 2 was 10 into 0 0.026 so 10 was basically the way we can combine two red balls and five two red balls and three blue balls right so the way we can number of possible combinations was calculated as 5c2 and then 1 fourth to the power 2 because 1 fourth was a probability of red ball and 3 4 was probability of blue ball right so and we wanted two red balls and we wanted three blue balls right uh, because if you have s equals to 2 that means there are two red balls and there are three blue balls and the way number of ways this can be combined is basically 5 c2 and for each of them the probabilities are same right it's 1 4 to the power square this is 1 4 each of them and there are 3 4 3, 4 and 3, 4 to the power cube, right? So that is NCR into 1 into P to the power R into Q to the power N minus R, right? So in our case, N is basically 5, right? Because these are the total number of balls that we are concerned with. There are 5 balls that we are concerned with. R is out of that the number of options that we want to select right so s equals to 2 so we are basically concerned with two blue balls and what, what is the probability of success in those those blue balls that is your probability of success is 1 fourth to the power r and q into n minus r right so this is something that you can see here n equals to 5 r equals to 2 p equals to 1 fourth and q equals to 3 fourth right so this is the probability of success of red and blue balls this is the number of times you wanted the blue balls to be and this are total number of possible balls that are there right so if you do this you will come up with this formula 
So now can you calculate the probability of getting exactly 3 red balls if we draw 24 balls from the playing field? So we are concerned, so in this case our n is 24, our r is 3, right? And p and q remains the same assuming because it's the same playing bit. So now it's 24 c3 because we are concerned with 3 red balls into p to the power 3 into q to the power 21, right? Now we understand what is a binomial distribution, right? So binomial distribution is basically and you can have this not only for blue balls. So let's understand what is what is the, what are the cases where we need to apply binomial like what are the distribution or what are those experiments where we can apply binomial distribution so binomial experiment obviously has a fixed number of trials right so what is a fixed number of trial is basically that n should be fixed right so basically number of balls that you are looking at right so you with each of the time you are drawing out a ball that is one particular trial so in our example earlier first example we had five trials right so number of trials should be fixed each of the trial must be independent of all other trial right every time you're picking up a ball that is independent of the time you're picking up each time you're picking a ball it does not basically uh, has anything to do with the next time you're picking up a ball right so that's perfectly fine each outcome of each trial must be able to be classified as only one of two categories right it could be red or blue if this in this particular example for example if we had red blue and green and we were concerned about what is the probability of uh i don't know probably red out red ball or a blue ball red ball, one red ball one blue ball and all of that uh well those are also possible because one red ball and one blue ball basically means that you have so now let's understand so this was an example of a binomial distribution you know binomial dist in this case there were basically red balls and blue balls and then we were trying to figure out if we had five times we draw the balls what are the probability that the two there would be two times a red ball right and three times a blue ball now it could be three times it could be four times and all of that so that's a random variable being number of times there are blue ball and that particular variable as we saw was a discrete variable and that discrete variable had five six possible options right zero one two three four and five so there are five trials and the random variable which is basically number of times the red ball is picked up could take up any of those values. Now we saw that's a random variable because there's a probability associated with each of them. We saw what is a probability with S equals to two, right? And similarly in this case, uh, now this is an example of a binomial distribution. Now why this is an example we'll understand in a bit. Now this a binomial, similar examples of binomial distributions could be cases where you're tossing a head and you're counting, for example, number of times, uh, there's a there's a head right now similar example of binomial distribution could be cases where you're say rolling a die right rolling two dice for example and then you're summing up the number that comes up in both of them again that is something uh, in a similar example could be for example if you are uh, flipping three coins right and the probability that there's a head uh, number of times head comes up in in a number of times head comes up right in any of the trials so that could basically be a random variable which could again take values from 0, 1, 2 and 3 and that could again be a binomial distribution right so for example so again it's the same example we did earlier when we rolled two die and then we basically saw the probability that uh, what is the number of what is the sum of the numbers that come up so all of those are examples of binomial distributions now so let's understand when we say all of these are examples of binomial distributions what basically makes an experiment a binomial distribution so firstly the experiment must have fixed number of trials which is basically in our case uh, in the case of taking out balls from this particular bit we had five experiments five trials right we were taking out five number of times which is basically to say n should be fixed in case of the formula right formula that we had shown so number of trials should be fixed each trial must be independent of all trials other trials which is basically the first time i'm picking up a ball that has nothing to do with the next time i'm picking up a ball right so that's perfectly fine each outcome of each trial must be able to be classified as only of two categories that is also fine every time i'm drawing out a ball i'm basically able to say that it belongs uh, to red or blue right so that's perfectly fine the two categories of outcomes and their associated probabilities are same for each of the trial right so the first time i'm drawing out a ball from the pit and the probability of first time that i'm drawing out what is the probability of that being one fourth is remaining the same every time i'm drawing out a ball right 
which is only possible if you are kind of when you are taking out the ball and putting it back in the pick right so basically without replacement sorry with replacement every time you are kind of taking out the ball you are putting it back only then basically your number of times uh, even when you are doing five trials your probability of picking up a red ball remains same across all the trials right so keep that in mind that is a very those are those are basically the conditions that kind of make uh, an experiment apt for to be a binomial distribution if it doesn't follow any of these conditions you cannot apply a binomial distribution to a particular experiment right so the, the understanding is that this all of this assumption must be fulfilled log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates